Welcome back to the channel everyone, Roni from Traveling Trekkies. If you recall in our last video about RV Essentials, I said that I would release a video about our experience when we owned the 2016 GMC Yukon Denali XL and we had it paired to a Grand Design Imagine 2400 bunkhouse travel trailer. It's important to understand that when you have an SUV you're simply confined to a travel trailer. That was one of the things that really drove me nuts in our search for a RV. We had a 2006 Ford F-250, had it for many, many years, sold it for the GMC Yukon Denali, and then now we own another Ford F-250. We believe the F-250 truck will give us the option as we continue our RV and life cycle to either come in and out of either a travel trailer or a fifth wheel. However, we did choose the fifth wheel, and I think that for us, that was the best choice. In the RV Essentials video, I talked about the big thing is using the equalizer hitch or any type of sway control. So I'm going to put the information that we learned, especially about trying to hook up that truck with the magnetic ride control. There was some stuff in the instructional manual that was highlighted as very important when you get ready to pair that vehicle with anything weighted. So I just want to release this information so that if anybody else out there has a Yukon or any other truck that has some sort of automatic leveling, um, check your owner's manual for proper installation. Um, check your owner's manual for all the basically all the stuff that you need to do to make sure you do it properly okay um, my personal opinion and our personal opinion is the GMC Yukon Denali XL was a great tow vehicle however I would really recommend that you probably want to keep the weight well below 5,000 pounds for that vehicle ours was a four-wheel drive so it was rated up to 7,900 pounds However, when you do all your mathematical calculation, cargo, all those different things you're supposed to, we even took it over to the scale, had it weighed, we did all the right stuff. And we were still under the maximum of towable allowance of 7,900 7, pounds. That truck still felt very unsure of itself. Some people might say that makes no sense. But if you tow, you know exactly what I'm talking about. We had a Ford before, a Ford F-250, and we've towed with it before. Um, so I kind of have a good sense of what I'm saying when I'm talking about the truck felt very unsure of itself. And one of the things I did not enjoy was going on a long trip with that truck and travel trailer in a kind of a white knuckle situation. So that was one of the things that pushed us to go ahead and trade that truck and RV combination out and pretty much just get what we really wanted. The downside of when we had the SUV is we could only look for travel trailers. When we bought the truck, we could pretty much look for whatever we wanted, whether it be a travel trailer or a fifth wheel. We ended up with the fifth wheel, okay? So I believe the information is still relevant, very important. YouTube is a great source to just find anything and everything. I did, I mean, we must have done almost however many hours of searching for people who had a GMC Yukon paired to an S uh, GMC Yukon paired to a travel trailer. And I couldn't find much. So this is why I filmed a quick um, video when we were getting our travel trailer hooked up to the Yukon so people could kind of get a better understanding of how that works. All right, don't want to be too long winded because this is pretty much the intro. So I'm going to cut to uh, the day we were at the dealership and getting everything all hooked up. I hope you enjoy it. Remember to please like and subscribe. Um, we, we are still going to get out and do a bunch of fun things for you guys. Again, I'm just kind of clearing the deck of all the 
videos that we had made while we had the Yukon because we no longer have that truck and actually that truck and trailer combination. So be prepared folks, we're coming out with new stuff in 2019 and beyond with Ford and the fifth wheel. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Please remember to like, subscribe, and as always, traveling trekkies to boldly go. Okay. We'll work our way around. Perfect. And uh, she just let me know right now that it's her first time with you guys. Yes. So by all means, man, if any time, you know, something's not really making sense or anything like that, just go ahead and interrupt me and I'll explain it as best as I can. Now this truck has auto leveling. Uh -huh. So then I was trying to read the manual, trying to figure this thing out, how it's supposed to work. Now, I guess the way it was saying, we lower the trailer on it, let it level, and then we put the weight distribution. So that's kind of how I was explaining it works. But I don't know. I'm asking you. I don't know. All, from what I've always understood is that we do all our deal here, get the weight and put everything on the trailer. Okay. And then however much it sag, that you're able to do that, and then it'll lift it up. And then, then yes, sir. Okay. Yeah, the, and then the back side. And the brackets on it. No, we'll have everything already assembled. Oh, Once wow. it's assembled, then you do the auto level on your truck, and whatever it sag down, it'll bring it back up. Oh wow. That makes sense. Yeah, let me just get to with manual real quick because it had a big warning thing with it. Oh, okay. Part, I really never understood. All right, so yeah, like, this is their saying. If a weight distribution, they told me that you guys are putting in a weight distribution hitch, right? Yes, sir. All right, so if a weight distribution hitch is being used, it's recommended to allow the shocks to inflate 
thereby leveling the vehicle prior to adjusting the hitch. Okay, so maybe we should go ahead and you should level your truck then, right? No, I mean, it, it, it autos once you put weight on there. Oh, okay. So my understanding is, um, I've been trying to research this, is we put the trailer on, and then I guess you have to do something that makes the distribution, or I, I don't know. one of these guys because I've never like I said you know these guys they come in with the trucks too that's how they you know, we normally do it is they put their own they just put everything on they put everything on and then, then the once truck. it stacks down then they'll like increase their the ones that have airbags they'll increase their airbags so they'll do it on its own and bring it back up on its own oh okay but I'll ask them just to be for sure So this, I'll never have to take this part off other than just pull it out, the whole thing. Yeah, off. other than pull it out, yes sir. Okay. Uh-huh. Yeah, you should have to pull it out. Um, what else? Okay. I'm not worried about them right now. I'm worried about us. We're wrong. Great! Right. So, you know, we're recording. Scrolling. Oh, you're going with him? Yeah. Wait, can I ask you a question? He's saying on his manual that, what were you saying, sir? Can you explain to him? To, to you? Yeah. Sure. Hey, sir, how you doing? So this Great. truck comes with auto leveling already. And so oh, wow. what it's saying is, and there's nothing I can adjust or anything. I mean, once it senses weight, it auto levels. So, and I've been trying to research on, research this online for a long time. So, and then the book says, if the weight distribution hitch is being used, I guess I was told that this is a weight distribution yes, hitch. Um, it's recommended to allow the shocks to inflate, thereby adjusting the vehicle prior to adjusting the hitch. So the only thing I was able to find online, which especially with the equalizer, is we put the trailer on, then the truck comes back up, then we put the braces on, and then you adjust the amount of weight distribution. But I don't know how I don't know how that works. Well, uh, what I would recommend doing is I would set that before you get those brackets there, Worm, uh, to the height you want to you want to keep them at. I would put it all on the truck um, and let it do its auto level thing, um, and then just see where these bars sit, and uh, kind of compared to there. And you might have to adjust that, and I think that's going to be how you adjust that weight distribution. Um, but I would just let it get itself level how it likes and then go about setting those brackets how you need to. Um, and I'm pretty sure that's kind of what it's talking about right there. Okay. Because you can't, you can't mess with this, huh? It's going to level itself. Yeah, it's just going to automatically just... So yeah, you're going to let that do its thing and just see where it sits in comparison to those. And you might have to adjust those one hole up, one hole down. But Depending on where it's at. Yeah. Okay. Because okay. uh, you're going to want those to be like right in line with it. Yeah. All right. Okay. Then I understand what you're saying. Okay, cool. Thanks. One thing I will tell you right away is that with this, it's going to hear it popping and moaning and coning. It's going to sound like you're messing something up. 
Now, now what about like if I have to back up? Do I have to take all this whole thing? No, sir. To? No, sir. Yeah, okay. you don't have to worry about none of that if you're going to back up. No, okay, I just want to be down here because so I got to put a pin in there. That's how that pin comes out. Okay. So let's go ahead and you know, I'm doing. I'm oh, good. Well, I got the same vehicle. I was uh, he was telling me you have an air. Does this have an air suspension on it? Yeah, it comes with the air suspension. So I've been trying to figure out um, how this is going to work, and I've been haven't been able to find I mean, find anything online. Yeah. Uh, I found one guy talking about you know you got to let the truck level itself off then you put the that would make here. sense I was just about to like I wouldn't adjust this to that I would adjust this to your truck because that's how it's meant to be this is actually really good I have a Yukon also but of course not not this newer model mine's a 15 but I have a 33 foot Wildcat the same system okay. and when they hooked it up it it, 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 it rolled level it was actually that thing really nice. Now it's gonna make a lot of noises and scare yeah, you to hell. Don't seen. don't freak out. The first time I took it, I literally pulled over and thought I had damaged my trailer because it makes so much racket. But after a few trips, you're gonna wear it in and it's not gonna do it no more. All right, so you want me to back up? Yes, sir. All right, perfect. Gotta give me that. We'll see how this thing's gonna work. Mm -hmm. Well, I made it back. <laughs> Hey, y'all are smart. <laughs> Believe it or not, yeah, y'all can look back and it's your Yeah, that's how, we, uh, that's how we learn. Yeah, I've gotten pretty fast with hooking up. I mean, I mark it. it when, when he takes it up, he's going to show you in a little bit, but later on you can get you a black marker and make a little mark right here when he gets it up to the height because you're always going to be the same height on your vehicle. So you'll know when you're going up how high you need to be and how low you need to be to disconnect. Okay. Just by those little black marks on that edge. That's what I got it. Little cheater marks. Okay. Thank you. That's what I do. I just bring it up to my marks, hook up my car, take it down, latch it, latch it, bring it back up to the mark, and put my marks. Other than it being bulky. So you're saying uh, because it auto levels, it changes how you uh, have to put the brackets in? Yes, sir. Yeah, because it's basically doing the job for us. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to bring 
it down so I can lift this up a little bit so I can put this on there. Go ahead and take down. That's where this guy comes into play. So, what you're gonna do, put it like this. with yours is you're gonna have this whole mechanism connected so just like what we did you're gonna put it all the weight on the trailer it's on the truck itself okay once the truck starts doing its thing and it stops then you can add your bars and put them on there if the bars are just like that one was a little bit too hard to push on you can get that little tool and just shoot it on there okay. it'll be a lot easier but now as you can see you're completely off the weight and it's straight across, right? Because it leveled itself out. To take the bars off, you're basically gonna repeat the process but in reverse. So if you were to take it off, you're gonna bring this all the way down to the bottom and lift it up. That's why he was saying make that little mark. Lift it up to where all you gotta do is take these off and then bars will just come off. Put a mark where? Right here. That's when you're gonna test it. To lift it up high enough it's gonna bring the back side of the truck up and the top side of the trailer up like a teepee to where all you can do is just take this little clamp top and pull those bars off. Oh, okay. This is disconnecting it. Disconnect. We're gonna disconnect it. Okay. Then at that point in time, you can bring the jack back down, bring the truck back down, bring the trailer back down to where you can unhook this, lift it up, and then pull your truck out. All right, so let me make sure I get it right. So when I get ready to disconnect this at storage tonight, basically put the... Jack down. Put the jack all the way down. Mm -hmm. And it's going to kind of pick the truck up a little bit. All right? That's going to take the tension off the bars. distribution bars. Uh -huh. um, take the carter pin off. Pull the bars out. Uh -huh. Okay. And then... Um, then bring it back down so that it's back to normal. Okay. And then to where you can open this. And this is going to open the bar right here. Okay. And then you're going to lift it up to where there's separation. To where you can pull your Jeep out. And then you can leave your trailer the way it is. Okay. Now it's up to you. You can leave this all one piece, even with the bars in. If you want to take the bars out, this little pin comes out right there. If you want to take this whole assembly out, it comes out right there in the center. Okay. Totally up to you. Now, on the equalizer hitch website, they were saying the, there was something about the spacers that you have to put in the center to kind of get the... And I noticed that you already had them in there. Yeah, I put four. Okay. I actually put five. Okay. And what do those spacers do? It's just that. So it is not so much straight up and down. Because if I want to put no spacers in there and left it like this, okay. then you'd be sitting like this with your truck sitting flush and the trailer is going to be sitting high in like that. Okay. So when I put that spacers in there, it tilted it a little bit more this way. So when the trailer sits down, now it sits both like that. Okay. Oh man, that gate that can't be open. Huh? No, I just realized my tailgate can't open up. Um, to get the pin. I'm gonna have to crawl in from the back. Because I can't, uh. Well, I don't think I can. I can go to the back. Window. Huh? Window. Oh, yeah, the window. window. Oh, wow. cable out of its mechanism and lock up the trailer brakes on okay. the trailer itself. And then this goes down right into here. Okay. So we're all hooked up. Do me a favor. Go ahead and turn on your running lights. We're going to check your left and right. So I'm going to put this strap underneath this little deal right here. Uh -huh. It goes underneath your tank. It's a little hole right here, and it just fits into the other side just so it can hold itself in place. Okay. Bring it down. 
on the truck itself okay once the truck starts doing this thing and it stops then you can add your bars and put them on there if the bars are just like that one was a little bit too hard to push on you can get that little tool and just shoot it on there okay it'll be a lot easier but now as you can see you're completely off the weight and it's straight across right because okay. it leveled itself out to take the bars off you're basically going to repeat the process but in reverse so if you were to take it off you're going to Bring this all the way down to the bottom and lift it up. That's what he was saying, make that little mark. Lift it up and make sure all No, I didn't hear anything do. about a mark. Yes, yeah. take these off and then bars will just come off. Oh, put a mark where? Right here. On the now, that's when you're going to test it. So lift it up high enough. It's going to bring the back side of the truck up and the top side of the trailer up like a TP to where all you can do is just take these little clamps off and pull those bars off. Oh, okay. This is disconnected. Disconnected. You're disconnect. Okay. And at that point in time, you can bring the jack back down, bring the truck back down, bring the trailer back down to where you can hook this, lift it up, and then pull your truck out. All right, so make sure I get it right. So when I get ready to disconnect this at storage tonight, basically put the jack down, put the jack all the way down, mm -hmm. and it's going to kind of pick the truck up a little bit, right? That's going to take the tension off the bars. distribution bars, uh -huh. um, take the carter pin off, pull the bars out, uh -huh. okay? And then, um, then bring it back down. Bring it so back. It's back to normal. Okay. And then to where you can open this, and this is gonna open the bar right here. Okay. And you're gonna lift it up to where there's separation, so you can pull your Jeep out, and then you can leave your trailer the way it is. Okay. Now it's up to you. You can leave this all one piece, even with the bars in. If you want to take the bars out, this little pin comes out right there. If you want to take this whole assembly out, it comes out right there in the center. Okay. It's totally up to you. Now, on the Equalizer Hitch website, they were saying the, there was something about the spacers that you have to put on the center to kind of get the... Uh, and I noticed that you already had them in there. Yeah, I put four. Okay. I actually put five. Okay. And what do those spacers do? It's just that. So it is not so much straight up and down. Because if I want to put no spacers in there and left it like this, okay. then you'd be sitting like this with your truck sitting flush and the trailer is going to be sitting high end like that. Okay. So when I put that spacers in there, it tilted it a little bit more this way. So when the trailer sits down, now it sits both like that. Okay. Oh man, that gate that can't be open. Golly. Huh? No, I just realized my tailgate can't open up um, to get the pin. I'm gonna have to crawl in from the back because I can't. Uh... Um, well, I don't think I can. I can go. I can go look. The window. Huh? Oh yeah, through the window. Oh wow, aren't you the genius? That's right, we got the window. We gotta get something out of here. Okay. Now I think we're reading that's a breakaway cable or something? Yes sir. It's basically, if you were to have some kind of tragic incident to where the wall was to come disconnected from the trailer okay. itself, it's going to pull the breakaway cable out of its mechanism and lock up the trailer brakes okay. on the trailer itself. And then this goes down right into here. Okay, so we're all hooked up. Do me a favor, go ahead and turn on your running lights. We're going to check your left and right. I'm going to put this jack underneath this little deal right here. Uh huh. It goes underneath your tank. So it's a little hole right here, and it just clips into the other side just so it can hold itself in place. Okay. That's it. Okay? Okay. 
That's a nice match to the car. We didn't even think about mm -hmm. that. <laughs> matches it really well. Just Yes, sir. Everything go good? Yeah.